this is some just really, really, really disturbing content. And some yeah. will understand where I'm coming from, hopefully, and some may not. You know, we really have to pay attention and understand what's been designed against us. You know, many know that we're the authentic individuals of this earth realm. Many knows that, but it takes us as the melanated beings to get to know that. I'm going somewhere, so please follow. We, as the people, have been very lost, very lost. We are nature beings. We are that made of ether nine. It runs all through the very essence of us, from our ancestors by way to our descendants, so on and so on. With me saying that, we do have an artificial population that will do any and everything, all right, for their longevity. Two stories just recently came to my attention. You know, um, people send me things, ask my opinion about it. I'm not much of a news watcher because it's so depressing. And it's like, there's nothing new under the sun. This shit has been going on for centuries. But yet when we do it, it's so shockingly and plastered all over the big screens as if it's the first time anyone has heard of it. It's not the first time, all right? This has been our land. This has been our planet. Unfortunately, we decided to civilize the population, and they tend to have higher things, but now everything's at its exposure. So the two stories that I'm um, a bit disturbed by, we had one just over um last several days in St. Petersburg, Florida. You had a couple. Mm-hmm. I really don't know the backstory of their history, but women. The signs be there. Men, the signs be there. See, we have to learn to not get physically attracted to each other. As with physical, I got a little nickname for it. I call it sport fucking. All right. When I love that term. Become one, it should be mind, body, and soul. It's just body, physical. All right. When the mind, body, and soul is connected, then you got the spiritual. You got the synchronization between man and woman, all right? And from there you grow. From there you learn. From there you build. From there you procreate spiritually. But when it's just physical, things happen because the relationship was never healthy from the start, all right? You're looking at, oh, he got a BMW or, oh, he got money. Or, oh, he wears the baddest material shit. You're looking at her, oh, she got a fat ass. Oh, she got big titties. Oh, she got them bat wing lashes. Oh, she got a bad wig. Uh, uh, oh, we're looking at shit for all the wrong reasons physically. And when you get into a relationship like that, you get a woman stabbed multiple times. And that woman that carried your seed out of a physical action, the child gets thrown into a body of water and an alligator has this child in his mouth? Women, why are we accepting this? Men, how can you be pushed to that point to where your seed, your legacy, a part of you is gone just like that? Because we keep adapting to the European way of life. It's in our own family. Second story. You got two cousins. I really don't know the backstory of that either. But you got one cousin that's out here trying to make a living, trying to make it happen. She has multiple babies. All right? Notice I said the sports fucking led to those multiple babies. She doesn't even have a mm-hmm. father. I don't know how many fathers they're involved, but obviously it was more than four children because three of them was deceased and three of them were still present on the scene, right? But out of sport fucking, you have multiple children to where you don't even have one of their fathers to help you. You got to go out of your home and work, which it happens. But you have a relative cousin watching your children. And she states to the law that the kids are missing, that the kids have been kidnapped, right? 
find the kids in a body of water, later found out that the kids had been, you know, beaten. They had scratches. They're still doing, you know, other testing. What okay. would make you, as a woman, we bear the babies. What would make you, okay, that's your bloodline. Kill off innocent children. Okay, she she's a big part of it because the children was in her care, and even if she didn't do it, you are responsible for those children. Those children was in your care. How did those children wind up in that lake? How did those children wind up abused? Are we that fucking tied up and lost of the fucking minds to where? We're doing these cracker motherfuckers, these artificial motherfuckers, a favor. Yeah, they put it all over the news like, oh, look what this one did. And, oh, look what that one did. But in the back of their minds, oh, hell, yeah, keep doing this shit. Keep doing this shit because guess what? We got the uteruses from these babies. We got the hearts mm-hmm. from these babies. We got the eyeballs. We got the rectums. This going over here in our family. Let them keep killing each other off. That's what we want. That's why this shit is plastered all over the TVs, every little fucked up thing we do. They promoting this shit, and we falling right into the fucking trap. We are nature beings. Learn how to naturally love yourself. Learn how to naturally intake the nuts, the seeds, the vegetables, the fruits. I know a lot of shit is grown into labs nowadays, but it's as organically and natural as we can eat. We need to do that because sometimes things that we eat, meats and different things, it is scientifically proven. Those animals are slaughtered. And those very animals that slaughtered, they hold a connection just like we do. We've been slaughtered. Look at our ancestors and what they went through. Those animals have feelings just like we do. And then we partake in eating yes. that. And by us take part in eating that, all right, where we're eating the essence of what the animal went through, that's running through our veins. We're supposed to eat nutritional things. We was never supposed to consume the garbage that they're feeding us. We're supposed to consume organic, natural things, and we're supposed to go out and partake in natural water and get that natural sunlight so that it can balance and give us the nutrients that we need. Yes. But we we so we so fucked up to where any little bandwagon that's trending, any little bandwagon is trending from the artificial hair weaves wigs, eyelashes, nails, everything. We're altering ourselves. Learn to be natural. Learn to embrace your natural beauty. We want quick fixes all the time. I do quick fixes. My husband natural almost nine years. I get it done probably once every four months to keep the little maintenance up. It's really quick. We spending all this money on dumb shit. Let's invest in our babies. Let's invest in our baby's future. It's all sorts of apps that we can download now on our phones, our tablets, you know, by ways of our history. But no, we'd rather go buy a pair of Jordans. Jordan don't give a fuck about none of us. Look what he married to, an artificial bitch. An artificial bitch. That's what the fuck we support. Okay. We out here getting the lashes and shit, getting eye funguses and skin and shit breaking out and got these big-ass black marks on our fucking cheeks and shit. That's from them nasty-ass hair weeds that you're wearing that's been sitting in a fucking warehouse and probably have all type of lice and mites and other fucking funguses in it, and you're putting that shit in your scalp. They went from fucking relaxers giving us cancer internally to now they're, y'all got the wigs on and the shit is getting into your skin and giving you skin irritations and you wonder why you got these black spots all in your scalp and all on your cheeks and shit and your back and shit broke the fuck out. It's disgusting. Get that shit off your eyes. Get that shit off your head. Women, stop being so lonely. Learn to love yourself. 
Love yourself by embracing your natural beauty. When you start having children, it's not about you. It's about them babies and putting your best foot forward and giving them kids everything they need and stop letting everybody watch your kids. And every man that comes into your presence don't have to meet your kids or play the daddy role. Exactly. People got motives. Our children is not collateral property where we can put it off and on on the shelf or put anything before them. Babies are a miracle. Babies are a blessing. That's a gift. We give more fuck about a goddamn hair weave and some fucking lashes and stupid shit and dick that ain't even worth your your time than we do our own fucking children, all because we feel we lonely. Men, I'm, I'm going to come at y'all. I need some men to speak on this. Mm-hmm. Multiple women? That shit ain't cute. That shit ain't cute. Mm-hmm. Look, just different bitches continuously. Notches on your belt. That ain't cute. If you truly loved yourself, one woman should be able to complete you. It's so much that a woman can learn about the man, and it's so much that the yes. man can learn about the woman. But we don't want to put that into it. We don't. We don't. We don't want to take the time to communicate, get to know each other, build, see where we're coming from. All we want to do is just jump in the bed, jump in the bed, and we jumping in the bed. And we procreate and call it these children, and it's not out of love. And we wonder why the world is going in the direction that it's going. <laughs> Nobody seems to give a damn until something is knocking on their door. Nobody seems to care anymore until they're faced with it. We just out here having babies and letting them raise themselves, letting them just run the houses. No, learn how to be the parents that our grandparents was, that our great grandparents were. Stop giving the babies all this McDonald's and Burger King and bullshit. Learn how to bond with your little girls. Get them in there and teach them some baking skills. You, everything's on fucking YouTube. Everything is on YouTube. We spend all damn day on Facebook. We spend all damn day on TikTok. Find something educational to do with your babies. Find something that's beneficial to do with your babies. With your boys as well. We have so much against us. And if we don't do better, it's not going to get better. We, we can start with just small things by being more vigilant by paying closer attention. I'm old school. I came from that era where it took a village to raise the children, and it did. I'm not saying go out here and beat the hell out of nobody's kids because a lot of us just, you know, hey, we really got away from that, you know. Hey, mm-hmm. We have to be mindful what's going on in our community. We have to get on that phone and say, hey, okay, these kids walking, somebody needs to get out here and really pay close attention to what's going on, you know. Hey, have that conversation. I know your kids be out here a lot, and, you know, it don't really be adult supervision. But, you know, sometimes you just got to get in people's head and meet them where they at. But our babies are coming up missing. Women is coming up missing. And we just turn it blind eye to it. We have to really start paying attention to what's going on around us. It's it's more to this story with three, three little girls. These three little girls just be still alive, out enjoying life, you know? Real. Three little girls. Three. Eyeballs gone. They got them probably bust up on the table right now. They bidding on their organs right now. They get a kick out of this shit. They really do. They really do. And we don't even understand the half because we don't care to understand. We get so desperate to where we feel like, oh, life is so hard and I just can't take it no more. And uh, uh, and somebody come and proposition you to sell a child or, or snatch a child and, and you, you, you doing this shit. 
Another situation is trending, which is sick as hell. You know, we put all our business on the book, all right? I have a daughter. I'm 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 that mother. I'm not going to play with you. You wrong, you wrong. I'm not going to side with you. I'm going to say what I got to say, and that's that. I don't uphold my child's wrongdoing, all right? We got a husband and wife arguing for whatever reason, and the mother just straight co-signing that shit. That's not the shit we're supposed to be doing as parents. We're supposed to, hey, the children is in here, all right? They don't need to hear this. Y'all go outside, go in the backyard, get the kids out. You know, be a parent. You're co-signing this ignorance. The children is in the house. And the wife is going berserk, and her mom just sitting there just instigating, co-signing her fucking fuckery. Shit got out of hand. The gentleman comes home. He's not really trying to hear, trying to get his stuff together, you know, not really trying to entertain her, but she's making it difficult to where she's in his face. And a gun was pulled and a gun was used in the presence of those children. Now, the mama gone to prison, the father's dead, and the grandma ass needs to be locked up, too. But hmm, depending on if she's charged or not, y'all going to put these children with that ignorant bitch? And yes, I could call her that because you know what? One thing about me, you're ignorant, you're ignorant, and I don't uphold bullshit when it comes to babies. We have to do better. She instigating this shit with her daughter. She didn't even have coming enough sense to look. Hey, hey, put that gun down. Your children are in here. Now, imagine the trauma that these children are going to go through. Imagine when they get older and really hear the truth. Well, Grandma, you you were standing right right there. You 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 didn't try to, you know, stop my mom. You know. You know, why she's not going to be able to answer those questions because she was part of the damn problem. And people may say, Hope, you're wrong. No, I'm not. Because had that young lady been properly been raised, she wouldn't have felt that comfortable to do that crap in front of her mom. Mom straight co-signed that mess. Okay? Never tried to get her to calm down. Never tried to say, hey, your children, three children, three children was in there. Never tried to say, hey, your children, it's a better way to handle this. I don't believe in co-signing ignorance. I believe in when you're wrong, I'll tell you you're wrong. And you need to ask me why, I'll explain it. Everything is almost like nothing is right any longer. Everybody's jumping on, well, hell, if it's wrong, that's a bandwagon I want to be on, and that's what we run into. Nobody wants to be told when they're wrong. Mm Mm-hmm. It's sad. Brother Lance, it's sad. Oh, it is. My heart it is. And it's... goes out mm-hmm. to these innocent babies. You know, the world is just, it's fucked up. I never want to hear of a child losing its life, but I can only imagine. And with that, maybe the children, unfortunately, are in a better place. I I, I don't want to sound mean in saying that. But... No, I understand. Maybe the children are in a better place. Maybe, maybe so. It just, it, it just disturbs me. It just, it, it, it disturbs me. You know, I just, I go back to my childhood. I thought my mother was just mean. I thought my mother was a drill sergeant. You know, she was a single parent, but my mom was strong. My mom was witty. My mom sat us down and talked to us. Even when we thought we was out of her eyesight and did things, my mom had a way of finding out exactly what we was doing. I appreciated that. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I appreciated the era where I came up in. You know, men was hard working. You know, they, you had them on the corner, but they was on the corner for meaningful ways. You know, now you see these brothers on the yes. corner, they all strung out, not even 50. You know, just all jacked up. What happened to the working class? What happened to the brothers and women in the community that that, that was about something? You know, yes. we we not we we been drunk up and shot up so much damn dope to where it's sad, brother Lance. So why break out? What the fuck we gonna do? 
I mean, shit. shit. I mean, from what I understand, a crackhead can run his motherfucking ass off. I mean, push come to shove, maybe I jump on a crackhead back and try to get away. That might be my means of transportation. But goddamn, I'm going to shoot a couple bitches. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's crazy, brother Lance. It's crazy. I'm sitting here looking like this dude is 46, 47 years old. I give him three years, he ain't going to be here no more. Because we're not taking care of ourselves. I don't, I don't get it. To the delight of the slave master, he's so happy. He doesn't have to do it as hard anymore. We're doing it for him. Seriously. Doing it for him. Doing it for him. Doing it for him. When um, I have time, I watch a lot of documentaries. I like things, yes. you know, that's a challenge, you know. I sit and try to figure it out, you know. A lot of things that comes, you know, onto the big screen, you know, people really don't pay attention because they're looking at it for the entertainment purposes. You know, they're not really looking at the messages that's within or the story that it's actually trying to tell. You know, it was this movie a lot of people was talking about several years back, talking about, um, I think it was called the Belco Experiment. Along with other things, you got Project Blue Beam, a lot of different things. I like stuff like that because that's what's going on in the world, you know. might not be to the exact scene, you know, but it's very similar, you know. And I'm always thinking, hmm, minds can, you know, come up with this or put this together, then it's going to happen or it's happened and, you know, it's probably past the declassification stage so that, that they, they can discuss it. You know, so I'll kind of look at this, I'll kind of look at that, and I just kind of put it together, you know, in my own little way. But it's right here in our face. We just got to pay attention. We have to pay attention and and utilize the gift that we have. I will say that till the day I close my eyes, your brain, your brain should not be controlled by anyone but you, but you. Let's 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 think, let's process, let's strategize, let's do what we have to do. Let's get past the the fear. Let's get past the oh, well, you 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 want me to do that? Oh, oh okay, I'm gonna do it. No, I'm not gonna do it and I'm gonna tell you why. We question nothing, we just go along with it. I can't I can't understand that. I can't, and I won't, because that doesn't make sense to me. It's going to get worse. And it is, Brother Lance, and it is. It is. I just I just go by my day. I just, I just look at certain situations, and a lot of times I find myself just shaking my head, shaking my head, you know, just beautiful individuals, you know. I just, I just, I'd be disturbed. You know, I got to. Young lady, I see her en route to work. She got her kids, you know, behind her. I had to stop half a couple of times. I said, sweetheart, yes, ma'am. And she thought I was going to offer her a ride. No, I'm not going to offer you a ride. That's not my place. I said, your, your babies are behind you. I said, you're, you're crossing through the traffic. I said, have your children in front of you at all times. She kind of looked. Yes, ma'am. Ye- yes, ma'am. I said, never have your kids, you know, behind you. And sometimes I'm out right. shopping. And this one, it just disturbs my soul. I, I can't stand it. These guys sagging. If they really knew what that meant. You got oh, a whole God, inside you. you. And sometimes, you know, children may be, you know, close by. And these guys' pants all down their ass. They can barely walk. Damn, they're bow leg and just pulling their pants up. You as a woman don't have the decency to say, hey, pull your pants up and keep them up. I just, I just got to look saying, hey. You trying to be with her, you looking for the same thing I'm looking for. Because I'm trying to figure out why mm-hmm. you're saying that. You know, I, I don't understand that. Pull your pants up. You know, you, you got children, you got a woman, pull your pants up. That's not a red flag for women. They just so desperate, they go with whatever. And then, like, now it's like the roles didn't change, the women buying the men. You know, I'm, I, I be listening to stuff, women be going all out for these men. What is these men doing for you? Other than giving you their physical self. What are they actually doing? 
you will straight lose yourself for this physical thing that this man could provide you. He can't provide you nothing outside of that. You stuck with the babies. You stuck with trying to figure it out. How and why are, 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 are we doing this to ourselves? I look, ladies, ladies, I love hope. Hope got started a little early in life. Yes, she did, right? But hope paid attention, and hope was very observant, right? I've I've never been that one to where I wanted a lot of children, never, all right? But never been high maintenance, never had to have it all. I'm very self-sufficient, never been codependent on no one. I've always stood on my own. Any man that's ever been before me, she's always been in school. She's always worked. Times ever get hard, I got something to fall back on. I don't look for a man to do anything for me in that manner. But if you're in my space, you're in my space, we'll collaborate and we'll build. I'm not going to try to change you, and I don't need you to change me. All right? And depending on what the situation may cause, I may be a little submissive, but I'm not going to be submissive to the point I straight lose myself like I'm a puppet. What you want me to do right now? What what, what you Mm -hmm. want me to do? Okay, I didn't do that. Now, now, now what you want me to do? It goes both ways in a relationship, ladies, as as well as men. You don't get in relationships to change people. You get in relationships that have that spiritual connection, that balance, that love. You know, we we just just how we go from you know family members' house and visit with them, and we're happy and we travel. Relationships are supposed to be that way too. You're supposed to be happy in your relationship. You're supposed to, you know, don't get me wrong, nothing's perfect. Nothing's perfect. All right. You get in relationships to balance one another. You make those fond memories. You sit and you communicate, all right? You sit and you discuss your day. It's not all about the physical. Put the spiritual in it. Put the communication in it. Sit down and, you know, have those monthly talks. Have those three-month talks. This is what we've done. What can we plan for the next thing? We can do everything else. The relationship is not even supposed to be based on sex. That's it. Once the sex is gone, what else is there? Nothing else is there because <laughs> it wasn't discussed. You know, sex will eventually get out. You know, role play, do certain things, make it interesting. You know, did you <laughs> ask her or did you ask him? Oh, we just see another one out in the street. Oh, she got a badass thing. You try to go, you know, hey. You know what? <laughs> Imagine they. With the woman you with. You know what I'm saying? Rub on her booty. You know, no, make her think she got a fat ass role play with her. You know, be out in the street, you see a little man, he got a nice little print, be like, hmm. You know, depending on how you're talking to him, depending on how you make him feel, it might get a little harder than you know, hey. You know? Mm-hmm. It's about communication, it's about how you make one feel, it's about working towards things. And then, you know what, if you're not happy, it's not for you, be man or woman enough to say that. You know, we're going to work it out because because we got kids. How are you working it out and it's already toxic, all right? Be man or woman and say, hey, let's step away from each other and let's co-parent. Because at the end of the day, you got little eyes watching, right? And them little eyes are seeing everything. How can that child grow up and be productive when toxicity is around? They can't. They can, and you want them walking around like what your actions is invisible and it's not. And then when they get older and they confront us with those type of things, we can't handle it. But that's what we did. That's what we created. They're not supposed to have feelings. Oh, they grow up and they're supposed to forget? No. We, We have to do better. Sisters and brothers, I, I love you all dearly. I love you all dearly. If I can sit and do counsel sessions with a lot of you day by day, I would. It's a lot of things that I see. And I just feel, you know what? Sometimes individuals are products of their uh, 
vibes or atmosphere, you know, where they come from. But if they know different, they'll do different. And sometimes it just needs to be discussed, you know. You, you need a little guidance. You need a little instruction on how to, you know, handle things more according. But we just walk by like this. It, it ain't my problem. It ain't my problem. Anything that's going on in our community is our problem. That's how we make the community stronger. That's right. I'm not going to hate my neighbor because my neighbor got a bigger house than I do. I'm not going to hate my neighbors across the way because they drive fancier cars than I do. No, I'm not going to do that. Whatever you did to get what you got, hey, I ride loose you. It's yours. You earned that. I could have the same thing. Just got to work towards it. So I'm not going to sit here and look down up on them because they're doing better. We, 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 we're we so materialistic. And what is that material shit going to do for us? We can't take it with us when we croak. We just, we need to do better. We need to do better. And we need to stop jumping on these bandwagons that don't need to be jumped on. That's we right. are going through some serious uneventful times. I have a couple of friends that's uh, over the road truck drivers and a lot of them is sitting in the yard because a lot of the important exporting is not going on. The stores are going to be empty. We are starting to have a lot of shortages for certain things with water and stuff like that. Um, I'm always saying hey, get your water, get your ammunition, get your guns. It is going to get real ugly. It really is, you know. And they're going to stay plastering BS on the big screens as a distraction. But we have to pay attention as to what's before us, you know. They know what time it is. They are all listen to me. All about <laughs> their survival. I'll share something else with you. Not that I really give two fucks, but I pay attention to my surroundings. You know, let me tell you how these cracker motherfuckers stay on code. And if we, we, we can just do a minimum of it, we'll be okay. But no, we're so against one another. So, Trump. Trump did a lot of fucked up shit in his life. A lot of fucked up shit. As well as his father running them damn brothels back in his era. But that legacy was left mm-hmm. on to his son, Trump. All right. Trump, a businessman by way of his father and what his father was connected with. Uh, love to go out here and vote for these motherfuckers. And really and truly, that's some rigged up bullshit too. But what was the lady named Stormy? Am I saying that right? Yeah, Stormy. Right? Stormy. Stormy? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Stormy Day. Yeah. Supposed to be, you know, uh, having some charges and you know, supposed to be indicted. What was it? Uh, last Tuesday. Okay. He fucked over a white bitch. Okay. Ugh, they love to call Wolf with the black man. But Trump fucked over a white bitch. All right. And this this white bitch, like, she felt that he done her wrong and he should have Trump just brought up again. Okay. We got a hell of a lot of supporters, y'all. I'm down here in Florida. Let me tell you. These motherfuckers <laughs> damn near on every exit in support of this man. All right. Fuck what the white bitch said. Fuck what Becky said. Fuck what Karen said. Oh, Trump is our guy. You know, I don't give a fuck what the fuck you did to her. Trump is our guy. When I say <laughs> these fools is out truck deep, RVs deep, Trump memorabilia every damn word in support of this damn. Thing. Okay. Oh, it's big down here. They everywhere on every damn corner. Okay, if they had actually arrested that man, it was probably going to be a fucking war down here. Oh, okay? yeah. But yeah. that's some shit mm-hmm. we need not to get ourselves involved. Let them crack up motherfuckers kill each other. All right? But you see, even when they're in the wrong, how they still support each other? That's I'm right. talking grandma, right. yeah. grandma, uncles, aunties, kids, dogs. I seen a damn man out there with his damn bird on his shoulder. I said, what the fuck? For Trump, y'all. For Trump. 
he 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 didn't do Geraldine wrong, you know. He didn't do Lucia wrong. He did a Karen, a Becky wrong, and many others, many others. But they protect they motherfucking own, y'all. They they stay on code. He was behind the shit January sixth. He really was. Motherfuckers mm-hmm. ran up there, man. Listen, listen, listen. Had that been one of us behind this shit, we'll see. I don't know. If we had a went suited and booted and armed, you know, and popping their asses back, it might have went down like that. But see, we 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 don't think clearly like that. We just don't, right? But let that have been one of us or several of us that went did this shit on that fucking capital, they would have blew the whole goddamn block up. All right. They gonna make so a point. We are, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So let's think. They already watching us. They been watching us. So when we do become proactive, we need to make sure we proactive and gonna get their asses something to think on. See, we out here protesting. We ain't really suited and booty like that. Oh, they're just gonna talk. They're just gonna tear up. No, no, no. We we, we didn't did all of that. We we need to strategize a little different. You know, we need to have shit on our back and shit on our hips as well as shit in our hands. It's it's gonna come down to that. But they already know. They get into it. Oh, the blacks are going to help. They're going to help. They're going to help because we hop on every damn bandwagon. Let some crackers kill each other. Mm-hmm. That, that that ain't our fucking fight. Our fight is our survival. They're trying to take us out, you all, by way of the water, by way of the food, by way of the shit they put on TV, all right? By by On so many various levels, y'all, they're trying to take us out. Hey, I just sat here and read the reports yesterday. Alzheimer's and dementia. All right. It's starting to show up in individuals between the ages of 23 and 30. I heard about that. Oh, man. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that is? From the armed Stuff nutritional in, food. In, what, that's right. And the shit that they're spraying us with in the skies, and this contaminated ass water that we're drinking, and the bullshit that's 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 flashing on the television. It's 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 mental overload. It's so much. It's just da 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 da. You watching all this shit on TV. Then you're getting in your cars, or you're going to school. You listening to all this shit. Then we got the damn AirPods in our ears. We sitting in front of these damn video games, and then we're not getting. An actual nutritionist meal. We eating out this McDonald's, Burger King, Sonic bullshit. You know, we ain't properly resting. We obese and shit. Then I go outside. You're getting sprayed with chemtrails and fake ass cloud seeds that they putting in there, making them fake ass clouds and the gas and shit dissipating. And we in hell in this shit. This shit is by design. To where we're not thinking in the manner that we should be thinking. And that's why when these stupid motherfuckers come to us and be like, oh, you see them little kids over there playing, you know, everybody, you know, hurting. The economy is just all out of control. Rent's at an all-time damn high. You know, with y'all paying for rent, that should be mortgage payments and shit, but I know you're struggling and shit like that. But if you go over there and, you know, snatch up, you know, them little kids over there, I, I, I make sure you, you, you make off good. You know, and if you do what you're supposed to do, and I come back to you in about six or seven months, and you give me some more kids, you know what I'm saying? I, I, you know, break you off even more. That's Damn. what the fuck we're dealing with, and we okay with this shit. So I didn't made out hundred, two hundred thousand dollars. My girl didn't fell on hard time. You know, she think the world of me. So I'm gonna go and share, you know. How I've been getting down with her, you know. Oh, damn, girl. You got it like that. Well, how, how many kids? How, girl, I actually thought you were sucking dick or selling ass to do that. Because that's shit she on, right? Right? Mm-hmm. This shit she on. Yeah, damn, girl, I didn't think you, you was into those stuff like that. I thought maybe, you know, you was doing some head jobs, you know, selling booty or something. God damn, girl, so how, how, how many kids I got to get? She ain't even in her right frame of mind to say that shit wrong. Because she worried about the shit she got to get out of. This shit is by motherfucking design, y'all. This shit is by design, y'all. 
So now she go take off with a couple kids, and I put her on. And it goes on and on and on. And that's how the kids are being groomed. That's how the kids are being stolen. That's how the babies and women is being shipped over in these containers overseas and shit. And we know this shit going on. But we too fucking high or drunk to make sure. I mean, too fucking high and drunk, and we can't walk our babies to the bus. We ain't got decency to say, fuck, I'm taking my child out of the fucking school system so they won't be a product of this bullshit and try to fucking homeschool. There you go. We just keep going with the bullshit. When are we, as the people, going to say enough is enough? Women, hey. I'm all for it. Just how we talk and having a discussion. Hey, we can do this with our babies. We can pull our babies out the school system. A DCF registered and a mental health registered whenever you're ready. Women, I extend my hand to you. You want to pull your babies out of the school system and we start homeschooling by way of these conference lines? Hey, I'm all for it. Let's just get together and network. They'll get the much-needed essentials that they need, and we'll put a little spin on it and give them actually our history as well. That's right. Single fathers. Hey, I'm for it. I'm for it. Women that's out there and willing, stay at home. Open up your house and make your house a home daycare. And to ease the parents' mind, get you some cameras in your home so you're uh, children that you're watching, parents can see what's going on inside your home. I'm sorry, going on inside your homes. LLC yourselves and get your three to five children. It's all sorts of ways that we could be back on top, but we're too easily distracted and fear shit. If we say no more, we're not living in this systematic matrix-ass bullshit and just start doing collectively what the fuck can they say or do. How many more schools going to get shot up? How many more? All the signs are there. Why are our children even attending public schools? Understand we got lives. Understand we got things that we have to do. But when are we going to actually start overthinking and say, hey, my children ain't safe. Okay, all this shit my children is learning is a damn lie. Yeah, we have to learn it. We have no choice. But now we have devices in our faces, phones, computers, tablets, everything to teach and show us different. And we're not hopping on that bandwagon to make a difference for ours. What's wrong with us? What's wrong with us? Look, we can give them tablets and phones and they can go in their room and do crazy-ass TikTok videos and put themselves out there because we're not showing them or teaching them differently. We can't give up on our babies. We can't give up on our communities. We here, we got to understand what our purpose is and live that shit. Ladies, I know some of y'all still know how to cook. I know how to cook. Let's get these babies in one house and let's teach them, right? And other ladies, you know, let's cook and get them some nourishing meals, nourishing smoothies, right? Men, let's show them how to fish. Let's show them how to go out here and hunt, you know? Let's do that. Don't our babies deserve that? Let's teach them protection. Men, let's show the woman how to use these firearms properly. So we bad bitches and shit. What? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The baddest. Don't take well to that. Everybody know not to call me a bitch. Everybody know not to call me out my name. Most people call me sister, a goddess, or a melanated queen. And I wear that proudly because I know how people look up to me 
you know, need my guidance. So I try to give the best that I can get. But a person ever called me out my name a bitch, look, look, you're going to have to eat those words mm. because I'm not that. I'm not that. That's right. You can call me a melanated queen, melanated goddess. Oh, I live that. I live that. That's a hell of a fucking compliment because you know what? I embrace the every essence of who I am. Every single ancestor that's running through my veins, I try to live that. I try to embrace that. I try to carry that with me. I have a purpose. I'm here for a reason. And if I can't tell you the truth, I'd rather keep my mouth shut. I can't see you doing wrong and and, and step away from me. I have to come back and say, hey, let's rethink this. Let's 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 let's, let's discuss this. And once it's discussed, I'm okay. I don't want to see my sisters fall. I don't want to see my brothers fall. I need everybody's heads up and alert and paying attention and vigilant. Brother Lynch, you know I can talk all night now. You better weigh in. (laughs) Oh, you know I can listen and talk all night. You know, (laughs) my longest show is 14 hours. (laughs) And I'm loving it. I'm loving it. You just flow as long as you want to. And if you're ready to, you know, it's never an end to it because what flows through your cerebral and in your heart is a never ending thing. You're a natural tsunami, powerful tsunami of information and passion, righteous passion. And I could sit here and just listen to you all night long. Trust me, because what you're saying and what you're sharing is very much needed in the world. There should be people that are so hungry for what you have to say, but the enemy puts out so many things to clog up our mental and spiritual and physical filters. You know, so the very thing that we need, we look at it, we just turn away from it. And the very thing that poisons us and kills us off and deletes us early is the very thing that we feel that we need to consume. So you're doing a good work and I'm always, that's right, always here for you and always support you. You are a melanated, melanated queen. Yes, you are that. And just like you said, all of the ancestors that flow through you and through me, We have a mission to do as we live in this wicked system. It's a beautiful world, but the system is wicked and turned against us. And we need to make other people who look like us and who are us know that even out here in the motherland, they got brothers who are sagging who don't know what it means. Even out here in the motherland, they have women out here who are doing all kinds of things to make a little extra money, you know, and it it hurts me to see that because, you know, it, makes me see the hold that the enemy has over us globally. This is not even just in America. This is all over the planet. And we're, mm-hmm. we're sucking it in hook, line, and sinker. And it shouldn't be that way. Yet we're mm-hmm. sending our children to these schools to make their minds colonized, and they come out worse and worse with each generation. The amount of kids out here, children out here, walking around with phones and looking up on Instagram and just the crazy things on YouTube and just all social media They gravitate toward the decadent things, you know, Mm -hmm. and even to the point where they see me and can figure out I'm a person who, even though I'm melanated, they they know I'm from uh, New York City or America, you know, they kind of come alive to show me that they know what's down in America. Like, I'm not down with that. And when they stop and talk with me, I dismantle all of that foolishness and I do it in a logical way. You see what I mean? And we need to take time to do that instead of just using the phones and the television to raise our children while we do other things in the room with the, you know, that they have some women who have all kind of uncles coming by, but they're not really uncles. They're there to do their thing and leave. You know, we have guys that come around with different women and bring their kids around to different women. Oh, that's your auntie. Oh, that's my friend. That's my cousin. Yeah, but why are you in the room with them for three hours? So, you know, right. there's so much. And that's why I say we cannot waste our time with those who are sold out to it. There's hope for everybody, but not really because it's late in the game. This is 2023 and I've been mentally this way for a long time. All my life, I've been aware of certain things. What's the excuse that people have now? They're bringing generations and generations. You know, I, I, I just can't understand it. I mean, the age that I am, okay, it doesn't bother me. I'm cool with it. You know, I made it this far, but I know women 
and men who have grandchildren, great grandchildren. The grandchildren are out there doing their thing. I'm like, wait a second. I remember when you were a little girl and now you got a child. I remember when you were born. I might have dated their mama. And now they got a, uh, and they out there going down the same road. Mm-hmm. It's like the twilight zone for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How far can we go? Like Chuck D said, base, how low can we go? How low can we go? Mm-hmm. Very how low, low can we go? Very low. Like, wow. I can't speak for the next person. I, I could speak for me. Like, I got pregnant 13. Two months before I turned 14, I had my daughter. I was scared. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what type of mother I was going to be. I didn't even really know from that point, like, what was going on. But once she was born and I heard her little cries and I'm just looking at her and I'm just like, oh, my God, look what I created. Oh, my God, look what I created. That was my mindset. And I mm-hmm. knew then just from looking at her, this is a part of me. This is what I created. I smoke. Hell, I still do shit. <laughs> I drink, but I knew right. I could not let all of that consume me. I had to be a better me because you know what? She's got to grow up in this crazy world that I'm growing up in. You understand? And from that, I have to be the best that I could be for her. I don't ever want to, like, don't get me wrong. I love my family. I do. But I'm like, there's certain people in my family I wouldn't dare trust, you know, to watch her or raise her. You know, you, you, when you pay attention, the signs are there if you're really paying attention. I've seen things early on in my life. I remember my grandmother talking to my mom was like, you know, she's fat. She needs to put her in a girl's home and this and that. So at that time, my little world was spiraling out of control. You know, I'm sitting here hmm, asking myself, hell, Grandma, you ain't even raised all your damn kids. You know, how the hell, you know what I'm saying? You telling and convincing my mom to put me in a girl's home because I did the same thing you did. You know what I'm saying? Now, now it's the problem. Like, you you still got kids and you, you, ain't, you ain't, you know, the best mother you can be for them. But you telling my mom, to throw me off somewhere. Like, I, I, I was just in a messed up head space. So just trying to do right to where I didn't go to a girl's home, you know, I had this crooked-ass pastor. And him and my grandmother was friends. And, you know, my mom was like, just go around there and talk to him. I guess she was trying to shut my grandmother up. I didn't want to go around there and talk to him because I seen things from walking to school or just being out that he had done. And I, I just didn't feel comfortable around him, you know, especially by myself. But I know me, I'm street. I'm, I'm street. You know, I've always been a little firecracker, you know. So I got to go around here and face this man. You know, I'm looking at a man. I fuck a pastor, fuck a, a title. He's a man, you know. So childhood friend went around there with me. And he knew we was together, and his tongue all out his mouth. You know how them old men be when they see something, they like be sticking their tongue out all excited uh, and shit. So I just kind of looked at her like, I'm going to go back here with him. But he tried some fucking shit. Like, I'm, I'm a champion kickball. Like, I'm, a, I'm a champion soccer. You know, hey, you try some shit. You're you fucking going to be missing some goddamn balls, okay? This is the balls. Pattern. Everybody wow. in my family. Okay, my grandmother had like 21 children. You know, they got children. My mom has children. Everybody in this town knows this man and has respect for this man because he has a fucking title. I don't give no fuck about that, right? This man, listen to what I'm telling you all, felt that because I wasn't a virgin anymore, I had to have his fucking way with me. Wow. And I kicked the living shit out of him. Damn and I right. got my aunt out of there, my girlfriend and I. A pastor, you all. A title-holding son of a bitch. Told my mother and my grandmother that he recommended for me to go to a girl's home. You see how this shit is by design to destroy family? Mm-hmm. Oh, I have something for all of their asses. I laid down. Yes, I did. And I mm-hmm. made this baby. 
what I felt was out of love. Okay. I'm not going to destroy this man's life that I consensually lay down with, and I'm not going to let y'all put no labels on me that don't mean. All right? So you want to send me to a girl's home? You don't want me in your house? That's fine. I'll fucking leave. And that's what I did. I'll go out here and survive the best way I can on the street. But ain't nobody taking my child that I laid down willingly and had. Nobody raped me. Yes, I was 14, but that was hope was willing. Honestly, hope was willing. The man did not rape me. Okay, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't accept that shit for many, many motherfucking years. Our ancestors been raped, all of that shit. You know what? <sighs> Fuck mm-hmm. they laws. I consensually gave myself to this man. I did, but I wasn't gonna fuck his life up off a decision that I made. I, I was fast. I was fast to tell, and I was in love with him. I was, but just because of that decision. I'm not going to be with you. I, I, I don't have no feelings for you. Outside of you being the family's pastor, like, you shouldn't even be looking at me like that. But he thought, oh, he's going he's gonna to get, get me some pussy. You got me fucked up. But this man went and recommended that I go to a girl's home. I took off, and I was probably about at that time, three and a half, four months pregnant. I stayed running. Just got around older people that I knew I could trust. You know, right? And they knew, but again, people's not going to talk. They was like, "Well, you can just come here at night." You know, we don't want your mom to know, you know, that you're here, and you know, just try to go to school. But they was looking at me for the school. So my twin sister, we was real close. She'll get my work and stuff like that. You know, to the point, I could still, you know, keep up with my lessons. And my mom was like right. freaking out. You know, send a message. I'm worried about you. You know, I don't want you hurt. And I'm like. I'm your child. Like, you listen to everybody but me. You know, you, you're right. trying to take my child. Like, I, I, I want to be able to take care of my child. And it just got to the point to where, okay, come home. All right? I'm going to come home, right. but I'm going to come home with the understanding of this. You know? I understand you think I'm a little girl. I've been out here in this world, and look, I know I done made a grown woman decision. Let me live up to that. Let me take care of my child. She didn't want me running. She let me come back home. I mean, what was the difference? You're going to put me in a girl's home. I mean, for what? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go there in, in, in advance. This shit going to break me down because I'm, 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 not, I'm not used to that. So before I go to a girl's home, I'll just keep running, and I will. <clears throat> it got to the point to where I had left the state and even went to Arkansas and seeing how my father's family was. My father didn't give a damn. I mean, he was street. But I'm like, the morals and values is somewhat, you know, there at my mom's, I see the difference, but at the same time, she's going to put me in a girl's home. <laughs> you know? I'm not going. So we had conversations. I did go back home, and I held up my end of the bargain. I'll finish school. I'll do what I have to do, and my mom was okay with that. You know, and I mean, from that, she trusted me. We, we talked more. We came to that understanding. Look, I'm not going to be the one to be popping babies out every year. Maybe... This needed to happen. You know, I mean, I was just at that point where I guess I was trying to find hope. Yes, I was young. I mean, little guy caught my eyes or whatever it was. Like, it, it was what it was. But it grounded me. It taught me a lesson, you know. And when she got here, I was like, I have to do everything that I can to protect her. I remember them nights. Some of them nights was cold as hell out there, you know, to where I was waiting for someone to come home from work on their porch, you know, because I couldn't go home. And I'm, I'm waiting on that push to get off work 11, 12 o'clock at night. It was like 28, 30 degrees. It's cold. But that's what I did. I would never want my child to go through that, you know, but that's the decision that I made at that time. And that's why I share certain things with my child so she could see. You know, we just let our kids grow up. We don't talk to them about STDs and sex. You know, no, talk to them. Like, I get cucumbers. I get but nanas, I get all this shit and demonstrate. You know, it's 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 strange. I I I, I take at my employees. I, I I talk to my nieces, That's my nephews. I talk to everybody in my family about certain things so that they can protect themselves. You know. You're amazing. To have <laughs> no, you're amazing at that particular point in your life. 
at that age, not because you brought a child into the world, as, as how you handled it, the presence of mind, the knowing yourself and what you had inside to be able to give to your daughter. That, that's an amazing story. And I think that there are more of our sisters that need more of a chance and support. And you were willing to, it's like Muhammad Ali, when he was willing to like, because of the war and his refusal to go to the war, he said, you know what, keep the title. I don't want it. I'll go to jail. I'll, you know, whatever. He showed what he was made of in that situation when other people would have said, oh, I'll just go do exhibitions and still get money and all this stuff. No, you ready to walk away from it all because you were going to be accepted as a woman. That, that, that proves my theory, which I believe is my own fact, that the chronological age does not matter. You understand? It, yeah, you had your it, butterflies. Yeah. You had little, little things like, oh, God, I got to do this now. But you forged forward. You forged mm -hmm. forward and you showed the metal, the, how they spell it, not mm -hmm. M-E-D, but M-A-T-T-E-L. You showed mm -hmm. what you were on the inside. And, and, and it leapfrogged you even more. How you handled the situation made you even better, made you even more wise, made you even tougher. I don't mean tough in some tough woman kind of thing, but you're durable. You're strong. You truly are. And to have that presence of mind, you said, okay, I'm going to come home, but it's going to be understood that this is the way it's going to be. That That's some serious... I'm not calling you no man when I say you got balls. Balls are not about male or female, just like the word bitch is not about male or female. But you had some balls more than more most men do. God, that's that, that's a phenomenal story. And I hope those who hear this can draw some strength or put some sense into the heads of some of these parents or some of these older folks mm -hmm. who may have a... And I'll who, go into a little you know, bit more detail to where yeah, I came right. from a horrific blended family. Um, my grandfather, Johnny, raised my mother. Um, my grandmother, uh, Marcella, um, she had quite a few children. She did. And, uh, you know, she was young. You know, she just wasn't, you know, a good parent. So that led to my grandfather, you know, getting my mom and other children, raising them. And he provided just so much. An uh, uneducated man from Mississippi right? But he was very family-oriented, didn't have much education at all, ran the farm, did what he did, but he loved his children. My biological grandmother, um, and people are probably going to get mad, but I don't care, it's the truth. And um, I can actually say that uh, my twin sister just wrote a book, and um, it covers a lot of that with our blended family. And the second book will be out sometime before the year is out, so I could actually speak on it. But uh, my grandmother, women is something. My grandmother held a personal vendetta towards my mother because she felt that my mom should have aided in getting my grandfather that had moved on and her back together. So I became approximately, I think I was probably eight or nine before I actually realized that Marcella was my biological grandmother. I thought that the gentleman that, I mean, the uh, woman that my grandfather had married, Essie, was my biological grandmother. Her and my mother favored to the T from complexion, everything. Like, I actually thought that that was my biological grandmother. Later in life, I found out that that was my step-grandmother, but this woman played such a magnificent role in my mother's life to where, I don't know, it's, it's, it's weird. She wasn't blood, but for some reason, my twin sister and I, we have her strength. We we it's it's like she's blood related to us. The knowledge and everything that, that she provided is just is something to where my grandmother Marcella, that side is is it's just not like that. So I was actually just excited that this woman was in our life. And <clears throat> later she was like, No matter what people say about you, hope she was like, you know, you all are my grandbabies, and I love you. And I'm sitting here kind of in my feelings upset because I'm like, she ain't my grandma. Like, the hell, like, what is going on? Like, Marcella, my grandma, like, I, I, I'm just in these mixed feelings. But Essie sat down and had a conversation with me as far as don't let what people say break you. Now, Marcella is your mom's mom, 
Yeah, she did not raise her, you know. I help in raising your mom, but I think your mom just tried to have the respect so she listens to her. She was like, with that being said, you got a voice. You tell your mom, you know, how you feel. She listens, she listens, she don't, she don't. So I remember sharing with my grandmother, Essie, my step-grandmother, which is my grandmother, um, how I just felt like my grandmother, Marcella, was putting things in my mom's head as well as her oldest sibling. My oldest sibling couldn't have children at that time. And she was in the service, and she was calling, like, all the time, like, okay, when she has the baby, you know, we're going to take it. So you know how you can, like, be in a bedroom on the phone, but you can pick the phone up in the kitchen and kind of still hear the conversation. Oh, I'm ear, ear right. hustling. I need to know what's going on because y'all are not making plans to take my child. Like, no, mm-hmm. like, they had it all figured out. She's going to go to a girl's home, you know, when a baby's born. You know, my mom had, you know, another relative's children that she had, and then she had my sister's children. So house is pretty full, and my sister's calling from the Navy, and she's going to take the child. No, you're not. No, you're not. Okay. I don't care what y'all say. Nobody's taking my child. But again, when you get these weak-minded individuals, Marcella, my biological grandmother, you didn't even raise any of yours. All right. Let's not even talk about that. You've had 21, 22 kids, and you're trying to tell somebody to take mine? Like my mom? You're trying to turn my mom against me? Like you're trying to break up a, 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 a family? Like, my mom wouldn't have, to me, acted up on that or pushed that if it wasn't for my grandmother telling her that. So, later on in life, I had to confront Marcella, you know, and she just thought I had the devil in me. And people don't don't, want to hear, you know, the truth. Marcella had some ways. And, again, me walking to school or just being out or going to the store or going to a friend's house, I seen things that I shouldn't have seen. I kept my mouth quiet about it, but you piss me off bad enough, I'll embarrass the hell out of you, you know. So, oh, she's going to be fast, and, you know, I give it next year, you know, she'll have another baby. You know, that's you. I mean, can you even keep count of how many you have? Like, you got a hell of a lot of mouth, but a whole nother lady raised my mother. You understand? Like, learn to shut up, exactly. you know, like, I, I was I was probably about 15, 16. I had a little mouth on me, but in my mind at this time, I'm a young lady, and that's that's what I want to be respected as. And every time I come around, it's always something negative from you about me. Let me raise my child. If you don't have anything positive to say, then don't say it, you know. But it goes to show how she was in her feelings. She still wanted my grandfather, and my grandfather moved on, wasn't thinking about her, and if she couldn't break my mom, I guess she was going to try to, you know, break the children down or make my mom's household, you know, strange. I don't know, but wow. I, just, I just had to distance myself away from them. And it was a point to where I left the area and I tried to get around my father's family too, to where I couldn't understand for a long time how my mother and father wind up. My father was just, he was street. My mother was very laid back, very classy, you know. Um, I got down there, and I'm just like, I I can't do this. This this is just too much. You know, it's exciting because it's new. You know, we had uh, rules at my mom's third time we had to be in. So I'm down at my dad's. My dad don't care. You can come in and out whenever you want to. He's not there. He's not trying to be a daddy. I can have whatever boy over here I want. I'm just like, yeah, it's not for me. I need some structure. I need some balance. So let me get back. I just have to take good with bad. I mean, I have a little girl now, so I got to put my – best foot forward with everything when it comes to her. So, again, you know, I, I had did some terrible things. I had to call my mom, you know, hey, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, can I come back home, you know, and let me think on it, and I'll, I'll, you know, let you know. So I need you to stop this running, you know. It's a lot out here. I don't want you winding up yes. in a ditch, you know. I don't want you in that baby hurt. I know you got a lot going on, but. I'm not going to steer you wrong, but I will feel more comfortable, you know, if you just took the time to listen. You are my daughter. I love you. I'm not going to give up on you. You have a lot of potential. And I want to see that. I want to see that for you and that baby. So you can come back home. So I went back home with a completely different mindset. The streets 
wasn't for me. You know, I got back into my studies and I raised my daughter, you know, the best way I could, you know. That's good you found that out. That just she's, she's room for you. And and mm-hmm. you didn't catch any scars out there that were permanent in any situation, mm-hmm. but you learned and um mm-hmm. it made you better. And now to come back home with that knowledge, you know, just mm-hmm. the, you know, resiliency that you had, it's just awesome, mm-hmm. you know, just mm-hmm. But it, it could have went wrong. Anyone, anyone, you know, step it away, and mm-hmm. that's what happens a lot of sisters out here. And maybe they would really learn from this when they hear this, because they might not be as lucky to have somebody to say, you know, come on back home. Or they may not be so lucky to have a child and then maybe have it with somebody who is violent or what you know that that wants you to be put you on the street get you on drugs do you know it's a lot of things and variables that can happen mm-hmm. young lady i don't want to i mean it, you were a young girl but i want to say you're a young lady but my god you know you had sense but you know this mm-hmm. look we were walking down the street today up in a different area and we were going to go to the botanical gardens in this other nursery and um it's on video and i'm, I'm working on it it'll be up by tomorrow we're just walking on the street normally so this young lady is sitting down. She 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 was very attractive young lady. And I mean that honestly, not some lust type thing. But you can see she's clean and you know. And so she said something to us, and she was saying in broken English, and it was basically she wanted to get in the video. So I said, "You want to get in the video?" She said, "Yeah, I want to get in the video." And so we stopped and I said, "Go ahead, you know, talk to us." And so she started talking mumbo jumbo, not the language. I'm just saying, but. She started to not make sense from what we can understand with the broken English. Me and Mrs. Kerr looked at each other and we let her talk and stuff. And so, you know, we said, okay, you know, so long. We're coming back this way. You know, you'll see us again. And then she, you could see in her face, she started to panic. And it's like she wanted to come with us. Now, she wasn't like 13 or 14 or something like that. She had to be like in her early 20s, late teens or something. But we quickly realized that there was something wrong with her and it, the way we picked it up it wasn't that she was a mental case to me like somebody did something to her on a spiritual yeah. level or drops food or something like that because you can see that she was a sweet girl she was mm-hmm. a sweet girl and it's like she place that she didn't understand she told us what, what 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 school she went to and stuff and then she began to follow us and walk alongside the side of the street she kind of stayed with us but she didn't walk up on us, which was no problem because you can see that 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 she had love inside of her and she saw something in me and Mrs. Skurve that made her want to mm-hmm. just walk with us. And mm-hmm. I was talking about that as on the video, you know, I wasn't just making a spectacle of her because we had the cam- camera in front of us and sometimes she'd walk in front of us and I said, man, I said, and I said that on the video to that effect. And um, imagine if she was in New York City. Imagine if she was in Miami or Atlanta. Mm-hmm. She's not right now. And she was a pretty young lady and um, very attractive and innocent. You can see the innocence on her. See, and even still, even with you after all you've been through in this life and you're not 13 or 14 years old anymore, you know, you, you, nobody's going to run game on you. You know the streets, but I can see the love and innocence inside of you beyond all of that. Mm-hmm. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. I could always see that. And I saw that in her heart, but she's so vulnerable. It's just, mm-hmm. it's, it's just not a good thing. But what I, the good that I saw was that she was not in a bad area. I don't know where she lived. Mm-hmm. She tried to come into botanical gardens with us, but they wouldn't let her, they knew her already. And um, mm-hmm. again, she was, she was clean. You know, she had a little stuff in the corner of her eye, but I'm just saying she, she was clean for the most part. To the point where if I had money, I would put her up somewhere, somewhere safe. Mm-hmm. Not, oh, here's a room over there. I, I would have set her up somewhere, but I would have had to observe for a while too because you never know if somebody grabs a kitchen knife in the middle of the night and storms the bedrooms chopping people up. You know, that's, <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. I'm not going to be, <laughs> I'm not that dumb. But, but I would put her somewhere where she's, you know, structure and, and, and mm-hmm. monitored and in a setting, but to have strong people around like, okay, you here, we're going to give you something that nobody else is going to give you, but don't make mm-hmm. no moves now because we, <laughs> we don't know what really is going on until we get to know. You know, but there's mm-hmm. so many people out there out, you know, on the borderline that 
that need help. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're so mentally strong, you know, in your transition into motherhood and you are aware of what was going on. And and Mm -hmm. not everybody's like that. And I wish we can Mm -hmm. have more help for our young who are going through stuff. And anytime you want to talk on different aspects of your life or just life, you know, just call me up. We're going to do it. You know what I mean? Because Mm -hmm. this is a phenomenal Mm -hmm. story. No, mm. an experience. Mm. I hope everybody can draw mm. some stuff from it. Because mm. you're phenomenal. I'm looking at, I'm looking at you more amazed. I'm more amazed now. I'm like, <laughs> damn, hope for real. I'm, I'm looking at you like, you know, I, I, I'm, you're like an idol of mine more so now. I mean, I, I always <laughs> look at you a certain way and see you a certain way, but I really like, whoa, the details. You know, you told me some things, but now that you told me more, I got to really take my hat off to you. Mhm. Mhm. Well, I will be um getting back in touch with you um probably within the next week or two. I've um Anytime. spoke with some family members of mine. Um we're on my father's side kind of originates, which you spoke to one of my cousins in regards to the Jeffrey Dahmer case, which I'll try to get right. him back on as well. But um mm-hmm. I'll be um I'm in my early forties. So people don't believe it, but we chopped cotton. We chopped cotton all throughout our teens into our 20s. And we Mm -hmm. need to kind of discuss that because we've been awaiting, you know, reparations for that. Um, We've been on Mm -hmm. a waiting list for quite some time. So um, some details have come out recently in regards to the families being paid. There's so many families that have to be paid between Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, um, out of skirts mm-hmm. of uh, Tennessee and Missouri. So um, our family names are up there. But that's what a lot of my family in the Arkansas area did. Um, we chopped mm-hmm. cotton. You know, my mother was completely against it. But, you know, when we did go visit our dad, you know, that's what he had us doing. So get with a couple of family members and we'll share that aspect of our life. But a lot of people can't believe me being the age that I am, that I chopped and I picked cotton. I did. All my older siblings did. You know, uh, by way of my dad. My dad has quite a few children. So we, we all did it. And people was like, I thought that was like in the 50s and 60s. No, it actually still goes on. And it still goes on to this day. Because you have a lot of people that in these rural areas that don't have the means to get the proper education, the means to you know, get out and no different. So it's a lot of older people that's still down there. They don't know how to utilize the machinery. So they still use them because it's quicker to chop and pick cotton. So I'm trying to get them to understand they don't have to do that anymore. But that's their way of, you know, getting extra money and different things. So I want to come back on at a later time and, you know, discuss that. That was torture. That was hell, you know. (laughs) You know, and I did that for a little bit, you know, to survive, you know, trying to do things Mm -hmm. the right way, you know, to provide, you know, for my daughter and put money away, you know, for a rainy day so that, you know, she could have things, you know. My mother was like, hell no, I didn't send y'all down there, you know, (laughs) chopping nobody cotton, supposed to be down there, you know, visiting your dad and, you know, pretty much, you know, be on summer vacation where you got chopping cotton for. So my twin sister and I just made a pack. That, you know, we'll still go down there, but we're just going to keep that aspect away from mom. We're not going to let her know because in our little young minds, right. it's good money, which it wasn't. But we didn't know no better at that time, you know. Right. So they have to pay a lot of those families, you know, that's down there. So I most definitely get with you. But I appreciate you having me on to where I said those stories you know, with the little two-year-old boy. Being in an alligator's mouth just don't sit right with me. Like, why will we adapt to that, knowing that's, you know, what happened to, you know, us? They fed a lot of our and of kids. all things. To the alligator. Of all things. Yeah. With the history of how they fed us, fed the children mm-hmm. to the alligators. Of all things, mm-hmm. you know? Of all mm-hmm. that, You know, that, 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 there's some symbolism in that, too, and they're pushing mm-hmm. that out, and mm-hmm. people who are out here, but you know, I love the fact that you stay on top of things and um, mm-hmm. we're just going to talk about it until we wake up. Some of them, some people are going to ride the fence and we might be the wind to blow them on the proper side. Some may not get it, but that's the work. And we're doers, but we have to talk about mm-hmm. it. Put these things in people's heads because there are a lot of people out here who are listening. 
even though they're mm-hmm. trying to shadow ban me and keep us down and stuff, mm-hmm. we know the deal with that. I'm not going to ever right. stop doing this. So, mm-hmm. And I love the fact that this is how we connected and we have this special bond. And I love you very much, righteously. And I, like I said, I'll always say that from the mountaintops. And I'll never mm-hmm. deny you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Most definitely appreciate it. Yeah. Well, Brother Lance, let's go on and wrap this up. And again, yes. I, yes. I greatly appreciate you just taking the time and, you know, let me, you My know, is- go in here and, yeah, and, just- and, and discuss some nonsense, basically, because I'm just like, how do you <laughs> just do that? Like, ugh, just a, oh. a baby, throw a baby in, in a lake, you know, like, ugh. I, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. You know, we, we as women, community period, you know, we, 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 we have to do better. You know, it doesn't come, even if it's a contractual marriage, we don't get to the point to where we're owning each other. I mean, if we can't come to a common ground, be a man, be a woman, and just step away. You know, right. I mean, so, I know economically, financially, a lot of us is hurting. Okay. I don't care if you got to go to a shelter, you know, <laughs> care if you got to go stay mm-hmm. in somebody's basement on somebody's back patio, learn how to co-parent instead of taking each other out. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I mean, nope. as a woman, I think the only thing that'll have me ready to chop a man up or seriously hurt a man, you got to do something to my child. You know what I'm saying? And I, that's right. I, I, I'm, that, I'm woman enough to walk away from it. If if you're not emotionally communicating with me, you're not helping me financially, you're not pleasing me sexually, I can be woman and say, hey, this is not working. We we, we need to go right. our separate ways. You know, let me go figure out and, you know, if it's something better for me. I'll never get to that point where I'm just mad. Oh, you didn't fucking cheat. Oh, fuck this. I'm, I'm, no. You know what? Yeah. You you save me heartache. You you save me a road I don't need to go down. You know? That's right. Go on about your way. But for me to get in my feelings, oh, we married and I don't know. No, 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 no. 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 Uh, it's, it's not that serious for me. It's just not. It's just not. Right. And then we you gotta live think you. about that, ladies, y'all out here, you know. I know. Sex can be hard to refrain from. I, 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 I was that person. I was. I'm yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's human nature. But when you out exactly. here laying around carelessness and you're not using protection, see how that man is operating. See, I mean, is he family oriented? Is he family based? Do he want children? I mean, think, think about that. You got a lady that had several children, and neither one of the children's father was there to aid or assist her, and she left these children with a cousin. I mean, come on. And three, not one, not two, three of the children wind up dead and abused. Mm-hmm. Where's the fathers? Where's the fathers? Get with a man that's going to say, you know what? We did this. You know what? I got the baby while you go to work. You come from work. Right. You know what I'm saying? You had a baby, I I go. We just, we just out here just just procreating life, procreating life, and you know what? Children, sports fucking, and this and this leg getting fucked over. We we got to do better. We have to do better. We have to do better, and stop being so easily to submit to these men. And when the only oh. thing they can provide you with is is the physical, and what I mean by the physical is the dick. And all you getting yeah. is a sport fucking session. There you go. A sport fucking session. And the damn demons that come along with it. It's wow. Sad. It's That's the truth. It's, it's sad. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to wrap this up. It's always a pleasure. I thank you so much. Always. And I'm going to definitely thank you. It's my duty. I love doing this. I always got you. I love you very much. And I always got you. You're a phenomenal woman to the utmost. Well, thank you. The epitome. That's right. Take care and thank have you. a good night, my queen. You as well. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye.